everybody, Miss Kristen here. This is our last World of Speech video. Um, we will now have been in five of the seven continents. So there are two that have people living on them that we haven't been to yet. So where do you think we're going today? Let's get started. Okay, so like every other week that we've done this, we are going to be checking out a country from our own backyard. We're going to talk about social skills, our pleases and thank yous and I'm sorry's. We're going to listen to a folk tale. This week's a little long, but it'll be okay. And we're gonna play a game, all right? As always, I'm going to ask you to be safe, responsible, and respectful. These are my expectations at school. These are my expectations for you at home. Okay, let's take off. We're on this plane one last time. I hope you have your seat belts on and you're ready to go. I don't know if it's going to be a long flight or a short flight. Any ideas where you think we're going? Maybe what language we'll be learning? Let's find out. All right, guys, welcome to Brazil. Brazil is in South America. Down here, it's the biggest country in South America. All right, any ideas what language they speak in Brazil? find out. Okay, so these, this is a city. See these lovely mountains? There's a big river in Brazil. And this is the flag. It's got a circle with lots of stars, a triangle, and a green background. Has anybody ever been to Brazil? They had the Olympics there. Yeah, a few years ago. All right, guys. In Brazil, they don't speak Spanish like a lot of the other countries in South America. They speak Portuguese. But Portugal, where this language comes from, is right next to Spain, where Spanish comes from. So the languages are really similar. So let's start with hello. I said hello to you when we got started. Who have you said hello to this week? Anybody new? Have you called somebody on the phone? All right, let's find out how to say hello in Portuguese. The most common and informal way is oi. Oi. Oi which means hi. Then Pretty simple. The most common formal way, which is hola. 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 Right, hola, which means just hello. like Spanish. Very cool, so I told you those languages are very, very close to each other. All right, so we can say oi. I say that usually if I stub my toe, but in Brazil, if I said that, people would think I was saying hi. And they say hola, but it's spelled different. All right, here we go. Let's say Please. What's something you could say please for this week? Maybe going, getting somebody to play our game later? You could ask them, please, will you play this game with me? So let's find out how they say please in Brazil and Portuguese. All right, let's see. It's very easy because the most common way to say please in Portuguese is the same as in that language. It same is as Spanish, do you remember? Por favor. Por favor. Just Simply exactly that. the same. Let's see examples. Por favor, você pode me ajudar. Por favor, você... So, por favor, just like Spanish, you can say por favor for Portuguese. All right, guys, thank you. Remember, thank you is my favorite word. I got to go to Starbucks for like the first time today. So when the lady handed me my coffee, I said, thank you. What can you say thank you for today? All right, let's see how they say thank you in Portuguese in Brazil. Someone, let's start with the most common phrase, obrigado. Obrigado. Obrigado means thank you. To obrigado. Say. Obrigado. Thank you. Well, it's sign language too, right? So, obrigado, we can say thank you. So, that one's very different from the Spanish. Remember what the Spanish thank you was? Yeah, it was grassy. All right, let's check it out. And finally, we have I'm sorry. Have you needed to say I'm sorry this week? It's still important to say. All right, here we go. There are two main ways that a person may say he's sorry in Portuguese. The first is me disculpa. Me, me disculpa. Me disculpe. Me disculpe. The object pronoun me indicates that a person is asking another to forgive him. 
So me disculpe, I am sorry, um, or please forgive me. That's how that one goes, okay? So make sure something happens today and you need to say I'm sorry, that you always use those words, all right? You think you can practice those for me? Just this one last week? All right. Okay, guys, here's our story from, I don't think that's my story, hang on. Our story from Brazil. It's called Domingo's Cat. Now, there are stories that come from all over the world that are a little bit like this story. Uh, if you like the movie Shrek, you probably are familiar a little bit with this story because it's a lot like the story Puss in Boots. Pretty neat, huh? Or the or origin story, if you're a comic book fan. So here we go. This, like I said, this story is a little bit longer, but try to stick with me. All right. Once upon a time, there was a very poor man. He was so poor that he had to sell one thing after another just to get food to keep from starving. After a while, there was nothing left except his cat. Do you think he'll sell it? He was very fond of his cat. And he said, oh cat, come what may, I will never part with you. I would rather starve. And the cat replied, uh oh, a talking cat. Oh good master Domingo, rest in peace. You will never starve as long as you have me. I'm going out into the world to make a fortune for us both. The cat went out into the jungle and he dug and he dug. And every time he dug, he turned up silver coins. The cat took a number of these coins to his master so that he could buy food. The rest of the pieces he took to the king. I wonder why the cat would take the silver coins to the king. The next day, the cat dug up pieces of gold and carried them to the king. And the next day he carried pieces of diamonds. So this cat isn't taking the money to his master, he's taking them to the king. That's kind of weird. Where do you get these rich gifts? Who is sending me such wonderful presents? Asked the king. The cat replied, that's my master, Domingo. Now the king had a beautiful daughter. There's the king with the cat. Um, and he thought that this man, Domingo, must be the richest man in the whole kingdom. So he decided that his daughter would marry him at once. He made arrangements for the wedding through the cat. I don't know why no one thought it was weird that the cat was talking. I haven't any clothes to wear at the wedding, said Domingo, when the cat told him that he was to marry the daughter of the king. Never mind about that, just leave it to me, said the cat. The cat went to the king and said, oh king, there has been a terrible fire in the tailor shop where they were making the wedding garments for my master, Domingo. The tailor and all of his assistants were burned to death, and the entire outfit of my master, Domingo, was destroyed. Hasn't your majesty something which you could lend him to wear to the wedding? The king sent his richest clothes, and, the, and Domingo was closed in a state ready for the wedding. Oh no, I have no place in which to take my bride, said Domingo to the cat. Never mind, I'll see about it at once, said the cat. The cat went into the forest and to a great castle where a giant lived. And he marched straight up to the big giant and he said, Oh giant, I wish to borrow your castle for my master Domingo. Will you not be so kind as to lend it to me for a little while? The giant was very much insulted. No, indeed, I'll not lend you my castle or your master Domingo, or anybody else, he shouted in his most terrible voice. Very well then, replied the cat. He changed the giant into a piece of bacon, that sounds good, in the twinkling of an eye, and he ate him on the spot. Went from a big giant to a little piece of bacon, and the cat ate him. The palace of the giant was a very wonderful palace. There was one room decked with silver, and one room decked with gold, and one room decked with diamonds. A beautiful river flowed by the garden gate. As Domingo and his bride sailed down the river to the garden gate in the royal barge, they saw the cat sitting in a window, singing. After that, they never saw him again. He disappeared in the jungle and went to make some other poor man rich. Perhaps he will come your way someday. The end. What do we think about this story? It was a little bit silly that there was a talking cat, but it's kind of neat. The man showed 
loyalty to his cat by keeping him even though he couldn't afford it. And the cat rewarded him by giving him all this money and he married a princess. Well, kind of neat. Let me know what you think of this story. Oops. All right, guys. There will be a quiz that pops up as always. So if you weren't here to watch it with me at your time on Google Classroom or on my mind, then I want you to take the quiz and submit it so I can see that you were paying attention, that you were watching. Oh yeah, one last thing. As always, we like to play a game. So kids in Brazil, like kids all over the world, love to play this game. Do you know this game? What are they playing? They've got a ball and they're kicking it and they're trying to score a goal. So, in Brazil, they call it futebol. In a lot of other countries, they call it football. Here in the United States, we call it soccer. All right, guys, so this week, I want you to go out and play some soccer. Try to play for like 15 minutes. Find a ball, make a goal. Try to kick that ball into the goal, but remember, no hands. All right, so get outside, play soccer. I tried to play soccer to video record it for you, but as soon as I got outside to play soccer with Penelope, she broke the ball. No soccer, it was the only one we had. All right, all right guys, so try out soccer in your own backyard. Let me know how it goes. You don't even need to play against anybody. Just get out there, kick the ball. Okay guys, that's the end of our last group. Next week, we're gonna do it a little bit differently because the next week for most of us is our last week of school. All right, so we are gonna go on a field trip. So you probably won't see me next week. So I'm gonna take this chance to say goodbye and I miss you all so much. And if you're moving on, I'm gonna miss you. Sorry. So this week, even though I'm sad, even though you're sad, we're, we still have homework, okay? Practice those social sayings, like please and thank you. Email me a picture, guys, please. Let me know how you're doing. Get out there and say, play some football. And have a great week and stay safe and healthy. Bye.